Hello and welcome to section six of the Beachwalk Blanket pattern and this was section five all completed with the last round being Parma Violet and all my ends are sewn in, nothing to see and everything is looking good. So you can put your blanket to one side for the moment because the next job for section six is to make another nice pile of four round granny squares and I'm not going to take you through stage by stage how to make a granny square because we covered that in section one so if you need a reminder just pop back to section one of the video and you'll see the um, the step by step tutorial there. So you have got 32 of these little beauties to make now and I can be quite smug and say that I've got mine already made. This is number one and this is my yarn kebab with all the, uh, the others attached. All my ends are sewn in so they're looking very neat and tidy and they're attached to the yarn kebab with the wrong side of the last round uppermost. So if I pull this off like this, this is the way you'll be joining it. To now, the I'm going to let you uh, get sit back, relax and get all your squares made and get the ends sewn in, put them on your yarn kebab and then you can pop back and we'll start the join. Okay, are you ready? You've got your yarn kebab all set, ready to go. This is no different than the one that you did when you joined. Whoops, let's take, you know, the outside of going round the nine squares and you did that section two. This is exactly the same. So um, there's no problems. I'm sure you'll manage it without uh, any problem, but I'm just going to start you off. I'm using um, the, a slightly darker grey this time. This is the Stylecraft Special um, Graphite, I think. And uh, I, as you can see, I have a disintegrating small amount left of this yarn, but I want to use it because I'm using every scrap as I go along. I've got another large ball waiting in the wings, but I want to use this because I've got all my yarn weighed out. So we start in exactly the same way with, um, we're working with half trebles again and attach in a corner of the square. Chain two and two half trebles in the corner. This will all come flooding back, although you've done all the, the minis in between that you'll remember from section two. Three half trebles in the next space and every space up the side. Three half trebles. You will have noticed when you were making these squares that your colours are changing slightly. They're getting a little stronger compared to the very pale ones in the centre. That is the intention. There we go. We've done one side of the, the square and stopped when we've got to the first half of the next of this top corner. And this is where <clears throat> we attach it to the corner of the blanket. Now, it doesn't matter which corner of the blanket. The whole colour scheme of this blanket is quite random. It's planned randomness, if you like, but it doesn't matter which corner you start in. We're far enough away from these squares because we've got this in between. So really, it's fine. You can start in any corner. Right. And all we need to do is finish this with three half trebles. It's 
slip stitch into the next space and three half trebles. I really don't think I need to um, explain it too much to you now, but I'm just going to take you along to the corner and then um, we'll leave it at that. And I'll leave you to work all the way around with these squares. Now, unlike the centre section, when you were doing your squares going around the centre nine, you always had a join between squares to work into. And that was, if you'll remember, you did the sort of crossover join where you slip stitched into the diagonally opposite space and back the way with the next square. Now, when you're coming, when you're working your um, join as you go around this part, which hasn't got any squares, so that <clears throat> there aren't any joins, we're going to treat it the same way as we treated the uh, mini grannies and have to both work both squares into the same space in the blanket and as we said before that can cause them to pull apart a little so just remember what we did with the minis and we'll work into this space and then we'll come down and we'll take the next one and line it up and work up that side and when we're putting in the slip stitch we work into the both this the square and the space. So what I'm going to do is just stop the video. I'm going to come down and back up and I'll I'll just let you see that to remind you. And uh, then we can take it from there. Down and up. So I've attached, started to attach my second square now. And I've just done the last slip stitch on this square on this side. And I'm going to do the first three half trebles of this corner. Now, instead of just going into the blanket um, space, you're go we're going to go into the space and the corner of the square and the blanket. And also, just let me see, this is another point where people can start to go wrong, and that is you forget that you're sharing this space with um, the previous square and you slip stitch into this space. Now you can see that that is patently wrong because we have a big gap, but if you're working in an evening, watching TV at the same time or whatever, it is quite easy to do that. So that of course throws your count out for the end of the row and you'll see that your squares aren't fitting. So remember, you are going to be slip stitching into the same space as the previous square, but I'm putting in my slip stitch into the corner of the square first and then the blanket. And that just keeps it all nice and firmly together. And then continue. That's all there is to it. If you get to the end of your row and you find that your squares aren't fitting and you do have the correct number of Parma violet um, clusters as, a, as the pattern states, then you, just, you definitely have made a mistake. The other common one is, okay, I've done my corner and I'm just going into this one and you miss out a complete space in the blanket. So don't be alarmed. Don't go around all four sides. Well, you can't, obviously, if you, if you do the first side and you're out of sync and your squares aren't fitting, just look back a lot. Don't panic. Just look back along. Look for the probable space that you've missed and pull it back to there. Take a deep breath and pull it back. It's much, it's not a problem. It doesn't 
add too much time to your work if you pull something back and redo it and it is so much better than trying to uh, you know make make it ends meet or fiddle it in to fit in it's it's not a good idea uh, the only other thing to say because I won't be back on the video until I'm ready to show you this finished section is that of course once you've gone all the way around with all of your squares and you're back to the beginning remember that you still have the outside edge to complete before you move on to the next section so I'm going to spend a little time adding all my squares in all the way around and I'll see you when I've got them finished bye for now I'm just popping back on here to show you that I've got to the very end. I've gone round all four sides of my blanket with my squares and they're attached. Each one is attached on three sides. <clears throat> of course, there's still this um, bottom edge to do, but I thought I would just put in the last one here while I'm on the camera, just to let you see the last steps of this join continuous join as you go so i'm just working up the side as usual one two three i'll go quite fast because you don't need to see me doing um half treble stitches i've done so many of them already but it's more just to show you what we do on the last square not that there's much difference to be fair one, two, three. And here I've got one, two, three corners. And why don't we just go ahead and put a slip stitch in all three? Because that makes the corner so firm. And then back into the end to finish off this corner of my last square slip stitch and the end is in sight or at least for this part just as well the end is in sight because also the end of the day is in sight and it's getting very dark outside so we're re relying on the electric light which is not such a good light for the color but this is just a a quick part of the blanket so we're very nearly there It's getting a bit big now, <laughs> so it tends to slip out of the camera. <clears throat> and we're on to our last corner. Now, of course, the journey starts to zoom around the outside edge. And we've done three half trebles but we're going to make the full corner here so i'm going to swing this all the way around and start my journey back round chain two and three half trebles to make a complete corner here and so on and the only thing that you've got to be careful of, of course, is this bit here where we're doing the um, finishing off the corners. And that is where we use the chain one and the slip stitch to carry us over from one side to the other. One, two, three. I'll just do that for you. One, two. One, two, three. I did have to start my new ball of graphite. I knew I would, but that's fine. That's that. Every scrap of that last piece has been used up. 
Nice neat corner there with the half trebles. And one, two, three. And we've just got this one to do and then we're at the corner and then I'll leave you to it. One, two, three. And just to remind you, it's three trebles in this corner and that is to complete the corner because we only have three trebles in it already and then we're going to chain one slip stitch into the space between the squares chain one again and then three half trebles and that just carries you neatly over to the next square here you can see what that looks like so it's all the way around all four sides and when you get back to this point here you've got three half trebles to put in a chain two to slip stitch into the top of the first chain two and then you have these to join so then just slip stitch into the corner of this as well to pull it together and that is the end of section six so i will leave you at this video um, and the next time you see me will be to start section seven and that will be in the next video tutorial so i'll say bye bye for now and i'll continue and finish this bye